Peekaboo. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about how nothing surprises God. Yeah, have you ever been surprised by something? And I don't just mean like, oh, hey, a birthday party, you know, something like that, but I mean like really spooked, like, oh, oh no. Like this one time I was walking down the street and I almost stepped right on a snake and I jumped so high, I felt like I jumped like 10 feet in the air, I was so scared. Or like, do you ever play a game where, where you might hide somewhere and then you hop out and you try to surprise somebody? You ever played that game or has anybody ever done that to you? Whenever you do something like that, you want to make sure that you're not, you know, jumping out and scaring somebody whose feelings might be hurt if you spooked them, right? And you, you don't want to be making fun of people. But but we play that game with my dad all the time. Me and my brother will try to jump out and scare my dad and he never gets scared. I don't know, I don't know how he does it. And it's not that he never gets scared, but he never gets spooked. Like if I'm hiding behind a corner and, and he walks by and I jump out and I go, boo, he just goes, oh, hey Douglas. Or like this one time I got an air horn, you know, those things you push on and it goes eh, really, really loud. And I, I, I hid behind a different corner and he walked by and I went eh, with the air horn. And he was just like, oh, wow, Douglas, that's really loud. Don't do that. It's so funny because he never gets spooked. I don't know how he does it. And actually, there was this one time where we were at a party at my aunt's house and everybody, you know, was in the living room and we're all talking and having fun. And, and my dad was sitting on the couch and he just very calmly said, fire. And we all, you know, kind of looked at him like, huh, what, what, did, what did you just say? And he got up off the couch and starts walking towards the kitchen. And he said again, very calmly, he says, fire. And we're kind of, you know, peeking around the corner. And yeah, sure enough, there was a pizza box that somebody put on top of a hot stove in the kitchen. And it was on fire. It, it was kind of a big fire. It was about as tall as I am. But my dad just walked into the kitchen, very calmly picked up the flaming pizza box and put it into the sink and turned the water on. And, and then the fire was out. And he did not, you know, freak out. He wasn't surprised. He wasn't scared. He wasn't nothing. He just, cool as a cucumber, got up and, and, and fixed it. But my aunt, when she saw the fire, when we all peeked in the, in the doorway and she saw the fire, she just screamed so loud. She, she was so scared to see this big fire in her kitchen. She lost it. Yeah, we don't play games where we try to scare my aunt because that's mean because she gets way too scared. But, you know, sometimes in life, it seems like just looking around the world, I kind of feel like my aunt sometimes. Right, you know, like with all the natural disasters and all of the all the the wars and riots and and diseases going around, it just seems like everything is out of control, and I feel like I'm just I feel like I'm just scared of everything, but God's not. None of this stuff that's happening in the world surprises God or scares God, and He's even more on top of things than my dad is. Way more on top of things. God's got a plan for all the crazy stuff happening in the world, and it's a really good plan. You know, all this bad stuff, like the natural disasters and the wars and the riots and the diseases, it all comes from people trying to do things their own way instead of doing things God's way. As soon as Adam and Eve decided they were going to do things their own way instead of doing things God's way, when they decided they were going to sin, sin entered the world and all this bad stuff came with it. And bad stuff's going to keep happening for a while and in fact probably get worse. But God has a plan. Nothing surprises God and nothing can overcome God. So my challenge to you guys today is that if you are, you're feeling overwhelmed by all this stuff happening in the world and feeling like it's just all out of control, I want you to, to just take a deep breath and remember that God is in control. None of this stuff scares God. None of this stuff has surprised God and God has a plan for every single thing. I'm not saying that bad stuff won't happen. You know, we did we did lose a couple pieces of hamburger pizza in that pizza box fire that my dad put out. But my dad had things under control. He put that fire out, no problem. And one day God is going to make all things new. He's going to make everything right. Everything will be the way that it should be. And so we can be at peace knowing that God has everything under control. Nothing surprises God.
break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Jésus, 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 Jésus,
Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're the Zoros from Montreal, Quebec. Uh, my name is Nate. My wife's name is Janaya. We help serve the campus ministry here in Montreal. And it's our privilege to welcome you to our Eastern Canadian service. It is that time of the month where all of us from Eastern Canada are gathering together as one body to worship. I think it's cool to think about the fact that this morning, as you're watching this stream, there are people uh, from Halifax, people from Newmarket, from Montreal, people in Ottawa that are joining you to worship God together. Amen. The message today is coming from our brother Peter Kwong from the Newmarket Church. Um, and I saw that the title of the message is, Are You Hungry? I am definitely looking forward to hear what he has to share with us. I'm sure it's going to be good and flavorful. <laughs> Um, I was thinking actually about hunger a little bit, and it reminded me of, of God giving manna to the Israelites in the desert. So if you turn over to, to Exodus 16, verses 9 to 12, I'll just read a couple lines. It says, Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. If you know this part of the story, this is where the Israelites are talking about um, choosing another leader that will lead them back to Egypt where mm -hmm. they were held captive. And as I think about it, when I'm faced with my own needs, sometimes just like the Israelites, my need can lead me to doubt God and to turn back and try to find my own way. Um, but if I'm willing to just wait on the Lord, he will be glorified while he's fulfilling my need. And it was hunger for them that was their need. But for you and for me, it's probably something different. Our needs can both lead us away from God or it can be the way that God renews our trust in him. So Nay and I just want to welcome you today as you are. Maybe you're full of needs and desires and you, you want to go back to Egypt and to try and find your own way. But I pray that there is something in our time of worship today that brings you closer to trusting him. You know, the amazing thing about our God is that he knows all of us. He knows all of you guys. He knows your needs. He, know, he knows what you've been thinking about this morning, what you're going to think about tomorrow. Yeah. And like Jay shared, our prayer is that as we spend time together, that you'll be touched. That this God that we're talking about uh, will impact you, will change you. Mm -hmm. And we pray that this will really be a time of refreshment for you. So before we continue with our service, let's just bow our heads together uh, and pray to our God. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, uh, thank you so much for uh, the time that we get to spend together uh, as a church, as a whole, uh, and to just worship you, God. Thank you for your spirit uh, that is giving us the opportunity to hear from you. I pray that you will be with every part of the service. I pray that, Father, this time we really uh, serve to glorify your name. We really serve God to uh, impact people to change us and to make us god into the likeness of our lord and savior jesus christ uh, seigneur je te prie que tu puisses bénir ce temps que ton nom soit glorifié je te prie pas que tu puisses utiliser chaque partie de ce message afin que seigneur uh, chaque personne qui l'entend chaque personne qui participe au service là puisse être transformée davantage à l'image de ton fils jésus on te demande ça notre fils jésus c'est en son nom qu'on prie uh, amen amen have a good service. Troubles come my way. Troubles come my way. I gotta pray sometimes. I gotta pray sometimes. Troubles come my way. Troubles come my way. I gotta pray sometimes. I gotta pray sometimes. Don't you know that my Jesus, Jesus he will fix my Lord Jesus, Jesus he will fix I said, my Lord Jesus, Jesus he will fix After a while, after a while, troubles come my way, troubles come my way. I gotta sing sometimes, I gotta sing sometimes. Troubles come my way, troubles come my way. I gotta sing sometimes, I gotta sing. No, that my Jesus, Jesus he will fix it. my Lord Jesus. Jesus he will fix it. I said, my Lord Jesus, Jesus he will fix it. After a while, after a while, troubles come my way. Troubles come my way. I gotta walk 
walk sometimes. Gotta walk sometimes. Troubles come my way. Troubles come my way. Gotta walk sometimes. Gotta walk sometimes. Don't you know that my Jesus? Jesus, Jesus. My Lord Jesus. Jesus, He will fix it. I said, my Lord Jesus. Jesus, He will fix it. After my service. It's always so encouraging when our family of churches can connect and worship together. The title of the sermon is, Are You Hungry? You know, I think we all know what it feels like to be hungry. Our stomachs growl. We may feel a little less energetic. We can get a little moody or impatient. And when we're hungry, our stomach wants food. Water isn't enough. Juice and milk and a hot tea from Tim Hortons just isn't enough. Chewing on a piece of gum, that's not what we're looking for. We want food to satisfy our hunger. We want some steak and potatoes. We want some sweet and sour pork. We want some curry chicken. Only food can satisfy our physical hunger. And similarly, our souls want spiritual food. And only God can satisfy our spiritual hunger. Now this morning what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some hungry people in the book of Exodus and see what we can learn. So we're going to start reading here in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 39. It says, With the dough the Israelites had brought from Egypt, they baked loaves of unleavened bread. The dough was without yeast because they had been driven out of Egypt and did not have time to prepare food for themselves. You know, when the Israelites left Egypt, the Bible says in Exodus 12, 37, that there were 600,000 men on foot, and this did not include women and children. These men were 20 years old or older, and they were of military age. They were able-bodied, and so they were able to serve in the army. Now, when I tried to figure out how much food was needed to feed 600,000 men, I remembered an eating contest that happened years ago at a pizza hut between two students in our campus group. We just played basketball and we were all 
famished. We were all hungry. If you've ever been to Pizza Hut, the pizza slices there aren't that large per se, but they're thick, they can be a little greasy, and they have lots of toppings. In less than an hour, the brother who lost, he only ate 18 slices of pizza. And this brother, he was pretty tall. He was 6'5", he was 220 pounds. And he was the one that lost this little eating competition. The winner, if you can believe it, he was 5'7", and 135 pounds. And in less than an hour, he ate 24 slices of pizza. And I gotta say, that was impressive. You know, I don't know how much food was needed to feed 600,000 men, but I'm pretty sure that they didn't have enough. But what I see is this, although they didn't have enough food for their trip, the people of God had enough faith to move on to a better life, a life with God. And this really helped me understand the first point that we're going to talk about this morning. That we can make a faith move even if we don't have enough. You know, I really believe we're often put in a very similar situation. We don't have enough time in the day to do everything we need to do. And it's not just time. We may not have enough energy enough support, maybe enough personal discipline, or enough money. Even when we feel like we don't have enough, we have to figure out how to have faith so we can serve God with all of our hearts. And what we see here is that the Israelites, they made a major faith move. Were they prepared? Well, not really. Did they know where they were going? Not at all. But not having enough didn't stop them from acting in faith. Now, I'm definitely learning more about this in my own Christian walk and in my ministry work. It's this idea that God works despite shortages. What can we do if there's a shortage of leaders, if there's a shortage of money and finances, if there's a shortage of time, maybe even a shortage even of maturity in our church or in our ministries or in our personal lives. Well, we gotta focus on what we have lots of. We have lots of God. But there is this idea in the scriptures that God can work despite shortages, despite scarcity. I'm incredibly proud of the New Market Church. As a small group, we have limited resources. But we made a major faith move this year. And despite COVID-19, despite a global pandemic that really has caused a lot of challenges economically around the world. The church decided to support a summer internship program to train young leaders, to strengthen the youth in our church, and to reach out to young people in our community. And so we rallied together and we said, you know what, God is greater than COVID. God is greater than this global pandemic. Let's make a faith move. And let me tell you, God didn't disappoint us. With just five disciples in our team and campus group, almost 30 visitors have attended our summer events. And God worked despite our shortages. I want to keep reading here in Exodus 14, in verse 29. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, 
with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. As they fled from Egypt, the Israelites witnessed an extraordinary miracle. God parted the Red Sea so they could cross through it. And incredibly, what the Bible tells us is that they walked on dry ground. You know, when God does a miracle, he does it excellently. He does a brilliant job of executing miracles. But it says here, when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord, you know, this is the same hand that created the sun and the moon and the entire universe. When they saw how God saved them from the Egyptians, the people gave their heart to God. And they were even willing to follow Moses, who was God's leader. Now imagine the awe in their eyes when they saw the giant walls of water as they walked through on dry ground on the seabed. Imagine the excitement they felt with every step, knowing that with each step they were becoming more and more free from their old life of misery and oppression. When the people saw God's mighty hand, they put their trust in God and his servant, Moses. You know, I think as disciples, we can certainly relate to the Israelites because God has done amazing things in our life. First of all, he opened our hearts to the scriptures. He opened our minds to the truth. He sent Jesus to die on the cross, and through his blood, we have this incredible, amazing salvation in our lives. In a very real way, he saved our souls. He put people in our lives to help us grow spiritually. He shepherded us during difficult times. Garvin and I are so humbled to see how God led our daughter's hearts to Christ despite our weaknesses and our struggles and our own shortages. Our salvation was possible by the power of God. And the second point I want to share with you this morning is that we've got to remember the power of God, especially when we're hungry. Here's what it says in Exodus 16, in verse 2. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. You know, you're probably asking the same question as me. What happened to their trust? At the Red Sea, they moved forward. They were all in. They lived by faith. Now, they're in the desert. And there's no food. The whole community criticized and blamed Moses and Aaron. I mean, these were the two guys who had just helped them get out of the worst place on the planet. They asserted that they had all-you-can-eat meat buffets in Egypt. Now, maybe their hunger made them delirious and distorted their memory. But how did they so quickly forget the slavery that they came from? the ruthless treatment, the hard labor, 
the centuries, yes, the centuries of oppression in Egypt. What happened? Well, they forgot what God did for them. They were so focused on their hunger, they had no faith. Their stomachs were empty, and really so were their hearts. Their physical hunger for food overpowered their spiritual need for God. Doesn't this happen to us? Not necessarily because we're hungry for food, but we can get hungry for things that we think can replace God. You know, at times when we can think that a relationship will make us happy or bring us true joy. We can think that wealth is the answer to feeling secure, that professional success will give us purpose, that sin will make us feel good. I think too many of us, myself included, we can get hung up on wanting to be respected. We need to be listened to, heard, and appreciated by other people. And we forget that what God thinks of us is more important than what a mere person thinks of us. And this morning, what I really want to do here is I just want to encourage you to remember God's power in your life. Now, God didn't let his people stay hungry. And so we're going to keep reading here in Exodus 16 and verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. And here's a concept that I personally have been learning a lot more about. The testing and blessings are from God. You know, here we find that God gave the people an amazing, never seen before blessing to ease their hunger and keep them alive. It says, God was going to rain down bread from heaven. Heavenly bread. In Exodus 16.31, the Israelites called this bread manna. And it meant, what is this? They had never seen this before. They had no idea what it was. But it was from God. It was a blessing. It was sent to sustain them, to feed them, to nourish them, to ease their hunger and keep them alive. And see, what we see here is they didn't have enough food when they left Egypt, but they made this faith move. They decided to follow God, and now God gave them enough food for each day. And here's what I find interesting. God gave the blessing, but he also wanted to test them. It's kind of like God is saying, hey, listen, I'm going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you prayed for. I'm going to give you what you've asked for. But once you have it, what are you going to do with it? You know, I really believe God does the same with us. God blesses our lives in so many ways. And we love blessings. We love receiving the blessings of God. And a lot of times, those blessings remind us of how much God loves us and how much God cares for us. And it keeps us wanting to stay connected with God. We love blessings, but we're not as excited about going through the testing, going through tests in life, facing a difficulty, facing tragedy or a loss or a misfortune, an experience or an event that really pushes us to our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual limits. And what I've realized myself is this. God often gives us both, and he asks us the question, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to rely on me, 
or do something else. You know, I've seen my friends, Jakey and Pat Fong, go through this. After being disciples in the Hong Kong Church of Christ for over 20 years, they decided to move to Canada. They gave up their jobs, they left behind uh, close friends and family, they said farewell to a church that they loved, that they had been a part of for many, many years. And they came for personal reasons, but they also wanted to find a place where they could serve in God's church. And they could have moved anywhere, but they came to Newmarket because they wanted to help meet needs and offer their support. Now, incredibly, God had blessed them financially in a tremendous way over the years. And so they were able to financially move to a new country. But uprooting their whole family was a big test. Pat's family had passed away and she wrestled with leaving her elderly father. Their kids, Jamie and Jeannie, had to adapt to a new school and make new friends. But despite many uncertainties, they prayed and they trusted God. And since joining the Newmark group, New Market group, they've just been an absolute joy and encouragement. The injection of their faith and maturity has added so much to our small local congregation. And really their testing has been our blessing. You know, one of the things I want to share with you this morning is a really big test that I think we're facing in the Eastern Canadian churches, revitalizing our campus ministries. I strongly believe that we need young men and young women to receive spiritual and ministry training who are going to provide leadership to our churches, both present and for the future. And our campus machinery, it needs to get going. It needs help and support. Now, I don't want to overstep my bounds, but I want to give the non-students, those of you who are single professionals and married, I want to give you a challenge. And the challenge is this, that you please support your local campus work. I strongly believe passing along our faith to the younger generation is every disciple's responsibility. It doesn't mean you have to lead a Bible talk on campus, but maybe what you can do is invite the students over for dinner and encourage them. And trust me, they'll appreciate the food. They'll appreciate you bringing them into your home and encouraging them in this way. It can mean praying for the students on a regular and daily basis, praying for open doors, targeting those particular universities and colleges that are in our cities. Your faith and your prayers and your financial sacrifices are needed. And I really believe if we embrace this test together, God has many blessings in store for us in the campus ministry. I want to close with Revelation chapter 7 and verse 16. It says here, Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. You know, God gave the Israelites the manna, that bread from heaven, that heavenly bread, for 40 years while they traveled through the desert. God sustained them for 40 years. And what we see here in Revelation is that God has a greater plan for us. With God, we will never be hungry and thirsty again. 
know, the question we asked at the beginning of the sermon was, are you hungry? And what we learn from this time together is that God won't let us starve. When we make a faith move, when we remember the power of God and we embrace God's testing and blessings, God will give us exactly what we need. Please pray for the campus ministry. Please pray for the New Market Church. Please remember the power of God. Please remember that when we go through testing and blessings, this is all good. It's from God. It's been so great to be with you and our family of churches. I hope that you are encouraged and look forward to seeing you again. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Owen uh, and I was an intern with the Ottawa Church of Christ this summer um, and I have the wonderful opportunity to say thank you to Peter. Um, I want to thank him for the wonderful message that he shared this morning. Um, it was truly encouraging and also a little bit convicting as all good messages are. And I really look forward to delving deeper into those principles and learning how to readily apply those to my life so that I can better serve God in the future. Um, I also want to thank Peter so much for all the work that he's doing for this for the Campus Ministries of Canada. Um, he is currently working on the Campus Initiative, um, which we are all truly benefiting from. Uh, we've had lots of Canadian-wide devos that we've been organizing. It's been a really encouraging time to get together uh, with campus students from across Canada and also from different parts of the United States as well. Um, I do also want to thank him for the wonderful training uh, opportunities that he's provided uh, for some of the interns. Uh, I know that I have personally learned a lot uh, from Peter and also from uh, Tony and Melanie Singh here in Ottawa. And I really want to thank all of the ministers and campus ministers who are taking the time uh, to teach us interns, to teach us young disciples uh, how to move forward in our faith and how to go about sharing that with those around us. Um, I know that one of the one of the most important things that I learned from my internship experience uh, was actually about organization and how much work goes into putting together a service or a devotional. Uh, there's just so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes. It's organizing people, uh, organizing videos, organizing uh, contributions, and all of those things uh, that all come together into a flawlessly run service uh, that you guys see before you. Um, so I really want to take this moment to say thank you to all those people who work behind the scenes, uh, for all the people who are writing those videos, who are putting them together, all the people who are making sure that our technology works properly so that we can gather together on a Sunday morning uh, to really worship and praise our God. So to all you guys who are working behind the scenes who we don't see your faces, and to all the people that whose faces we do see, uh, we really want to thank you for your work, uh, for your service. Uh, and as you go about your week this week, uh, if you haven't, please send a note to them, say thank you, uh, and show them show them some love, uh, church, uh, because without them, uh, we wouldn't be able to meet up, we wouldn't be able to have services online. So that was just one thing that I learned over the course of my internship, uh, and I'm so grateful that I was able to uh, be a part of such a great experience. So as you guys go throughout your week, uh, take a moment to think about what Peter said, all of those principles that he highlighted, uh, and also send a shout out to all those people uh, who work behind the scenes, uh, who make, the, who make uh, all of our services come together. Thanks, guys. Song, y'all. Praise her. All around the world. Come on. Woo! Don't be afraid to dance. It's the way for God. We're worshiping Him. Come on, guys. Come on. Ha, ha, ha. Lord, your love has saved us. Lord, your love has saved us. Precious blood has bathed us. Precious blood has bathed us. <laughs> now your message takes us.
our creation Into our creation Each and every nation Each and every nation yeah. Sending your salvation Reuniting Families reuniting All around the world 